What's the weirdest excuse you've heard for skipping work? One time at 1 a.m. I went to the bathroom to drop the kids at the pool and somehow my door got jammed and locked. I lived alone but I was with my phone luckily. The door was really heavy and couldn't break it. So at some point I just took the toilets, the dirty laundry, and slept on the floor. One of the worst nights I ever had. At the next day the locksmith I called told me he was late so I had to wait until 11 a.m. for him to open both doors. I spent 40 minutes at night preparing the message for my boss saying that I was gonna go late because my dumb got stuck in the bathroom. Not skipped. But late. Said goodbye to my daughter one morning and walked out the front door and locked it. Took about two steps to see a big bear about 10 feet from me. Spun around. Banged on the door because I was too stunned to unlock it myself. My daughter opened the door. Wide-eyed. I jumped back in the house and said look out the window. Had to text my boss to say I was going to be late that morning and just sent him a picture of the bear I took from my living room window. He later said that was the first time he's heard that excuse. Had a co-worker come in an hour late because, there was a flood and this woman was stranded in her car in the middle of the road. No one else was helping her so I waited through waist high water to help her get out of her car. I waited with her for the fire department to come. Then came into the office. And quat, this co-worker was about 5 feet 2 inches and skinny. She also lived 20 minutes farther out than I did. But apart from that we took the same way to work every day. She was an hour late and her clothes were dry. I encountered no flood on my commute. Seems suspicious. But what do I know? They panic when they hear their phone ring? The old default iPhone ringtone used to strike terror into my heart because it was the ringer on my old work phone. Change your ringtone. Oddly enough that simple change made a big difference for me. Yes but I'm not sure why. I also have the same reaction if my doorbell rings. I just assume it's spam so I don't really feel any response to being called. It's my birthday today and I am seem to be the only one excited about it because no one else seems to remember. It's been a rough couple of days so I get it. But I was really looking forward to today. Anyways that's my take. Hope things work out for you. My phones does not ring. When someone calls me it just lights up and I never get the call. Unless it is from someone I know and care about. This is a stress reaction and is not really normal and quat. But I guess many people experience this. It all depends on your past experiences. Yes I do, it's mainly because only my mom and dad or just older relatives will call me by phone. This generation mainly text. While it may not be any bad news from your parents or relatives. You just still get the pressure somehow. I'm glad someone else does. This post making me feel not so weird. Everyone around me acts like I got a major problem casu I put my phone on silent most of THR time now, unless kids are out somewhere and I can't miss their call if they need me. It was just too much for my nerves hearing THR ring tone or an unknown text notification. My reaction is how you described except sometimes I get that fear taste in my mouth. That metallic taste. If it's a number on my phone. I'm like uh, what do they want now? If it's a number that shows up as telemarketer or spam. I'm like why did this call go through because I have a spam blocker on my phone that works most of the time. They notice that no matter what the subject is, there's somebody that will be offended by it. This is simply not true and I simply can't even believe anyone in this day and age would be this ignorant and still think this way. This is so short-sighted and I'm very very offended that you would just lump everyone together and say something so racist and transphobic and homophobic and anti-Semitic and fatphobic and it also reeks of babophobia, the fear of babies, and intolerance of people who wear socks with sandals. IT doesn't hurt you if my dad wears jean shorts. Well there are many inherently different perspectives in this world as to the specifics. But ultimately some people feel attacked because they want to feel that way. I don't see why they wouldn't want to learn more about their feelings or become more mentally dexterous if they put themselves in that position so many times and keep achieving the same result. As for why it's literally 50-50 nurture and nature that build up people and how much they want or think they can achieve with others. If you disagree with me I fundamentally would have to disagree with you if you couldn't explain to me why you felt that way in a manner which seemed coherent to me. Honestly you're right. But with that train of thought let's not forget that in this modern era, people know how algorithms work and how to gain engagement. Controversy and negativity boosts engagement to its maximum because people love arguing or being offended. Even if they aren't actually angry or offended. It's the rush of excitement that they get from the negativity that keeps them coming back. My biggest pet peeve is people who get offended on the behalf of the group that should be offended and speak for that group instead of letting them speak for themselves. Sure enough. I've been advocating to make non-violence an organizing principle of society for years. And people act like I want to disembowel their Grammy with a bolo knife. Folks are weird. Man. What country would you never visit? Any nation with adversarial relations with the USA. I don't want to be held as a political prisoner bargaining chip because they caught me with a vape pen. Really surprised that Papua New Guinea hasn't made the list. It's not Somalia but it's not far off either. A friend worked there briefly and spent the whole time in a heavily guarded gated complex, home. Heavily guarded gated compound, work. Or being escorted by armed guard in an armored vehicle. He had to go through a number of debriefing sessions to adjust to the freedoms of normal life when he got back. That's a big no thanks for me. I will go ahead and apologize to anyone that lives there or is but I will never visit the Middle East or any of its countries. Reason is of.
most Middle East countries favor religion over science. They believe that most scientific practices are ridiculous. Control their media. Beat their women and tell them they are useless. Kill gay slash trans slash lesbians anything not straight. If you're not one of them you die. And if any country treats people in this manner. I refuse to go to. UAE, specifically Dubai. Weirdly strict rules. And it only seems to be focused on commercialism and man-made features. Looks like Las Vegas except worse. In today's world, a whole bunch. Even if I wore the local garb and had male escorts I would not feel safe and I would not enjoy my time surrounded by animals who only see me as a toy. As much as I would love to see what these areas hold. War-torn countries. Violent countries. Places with large cartel presence. Countries with a lot of corruption. Countries who aren't exactly friends with my country. I love traveling and I love exploring but I also love being whole and alive.